Here it is, guys. Part 44. 44! There's ghosts in my house. This is part 44. <laughs> oh, my God. To the uh, <laughs> comprehensive Christian uh, Splatoon. So I'm excited. For I'm excited. Let's get this going. What made her this way? <laughs> I love it. I love Gino, dude. What made her this way? I wonder how many people got actually upset by the fact that he was properly gendering her. Incredible. Drag your kids to Christian Weston Chandler. Christine Weston Chandler. What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? Wow, the tone is just, just a little bit different. It's a little darker. Right? This is the first time, this is like the first new introduction, because uh, Christine just, uh, you know, uh, identified as trans last episode. So now it's like, a just it just feels like the tone's different, and it's almost appropriate, you know? Wow. This is the story of Christian. Wow. I'm excited, Gino. I, I, I feel like we need a little more excitement in your voice. I don't know. Part X, X live. What is on that? April 2nd, obviously. 2015. Like, Christine left her house early in the morning. <laughs> I was like, what part is that? I'm fucking, I'm an idiot. To eat breakfast and drink coffee at a McDonald's in Charlottesville okay. before making her way to the courthouse to attend her second hearing regarding her idea. assault with pepper spray in a GameStop. Kiwi Farms users, Lipitor, and Hey Jackie Pie are also on their way to the courthouse to record their observations. They Did you? Okay. I'm just looking at this, this message here. So somebody said her, right? I love you. This, this is what you meant, but they did this. They did like a, a, a H. I'm really bad at drawing, and then a, wow, holy moly, that's abysmal. Eight is still bad. Doesn't matter. E R E R, right? So like lowercase H E R. So what I'm assuming is what you're trying to do is say like H, like oh, it's actually a he with a lowercase R, so that you would emphasize this to be transphobic or whatever, or whatever. <laughs> or was this was this intentional? Like I'm, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. They decided to make a quick stop at McDonald's and by chance encountered Chris. Oh. They took pictures of her from behind and then later Whoa, when she was returning to dirty. her car. Chris then drove to the courthouse with the two Kiwi Farms members following in their car close behind. Wow. They took a video of That's her entering obsessive. the building and later wrote their own accounts of what transpired. He just sat there in his car, seemed like he was playing a game on his phone or some shit. He sat in there for okay. nearly 30 minutes. I noticed he parked in a spot with a sign that read, Parking for judges only. Clear as fucking day. Entitled oh. cunt. We Jesus. wanted to go in after him, so we just waited in front of the door. From behind me, I hear a string of like nine stress sides in a row. I turn around to see him. He had removed the MLP glasses and wore his normal ones now. Wow. Progress. We go in there, and he's just standing there at the metal detector. He had so much fucking jewelry to remove, like bracelets and necklaces, it took forever for him to get them off. The clerk at the metal detector rolled his eyes at him while he was doing it. Okay. After he got done, he just sat down in a chair in front of the courtroom, but not in it. He was stressing and looking around nervously. Anyway, he finally fucking got up and went in, and we went throughout the metal detectors. By the time we got through, I had just opened the courtroom door. He was coming back out, and we almost bumped into each other. He said apologetically, Well, got that out of the way quick, and dashed out the door to the courtroom. This was like 30 minutes before his hearing, so we didn't know what to make of that. So we just sat down, and boring court stuff happened for like 10 or so minutes. We ended up leaving, because it was clear he wasn't coming back. Must have been a continuance. Chris is definitely not going to have an outburst, though, guys. He's super nervous. Maybe that's just because Barb wasn't there. I don't know. Her case was continued until May 7th. On April 4th, Christine updated her followers on Facebook with a post proclaiming that she was watching the second part of the two-part My Little Pony Friendship is Magic season wow. premiere. Okay. She apparently did not see the first part, since she had to go eat breakfast and buy glue for her projects, but so far disliked part two, singling out her aversion to conformity. She also... What? Wait, what? Why didn't she just watch part one? I, it was in 2015. I guess they didn't really have Netflix or anything. I'm just so fucking confused. <laughs> expressed her dissatisfaction with a new character. Kristen updated her eBay account with a new item, a custom-made wow. Sonic 2 figurine, largely made from a Sonic the Hedgehog amiibo, which was a special figurine produced by Nintendo, which could wirelessly interact with game consoles, such as adding a character to a game via a chip in the amiibos. Wait, so aren't those things like 10 bucks? So how much were you charging for the a painted thing? Base. She customized the original amiibo by repositioning Sonic's limbs, coloring over his body, 
adding additional features with modeling wow. clay, and gluing on a Pikachu tail taken from a Pikachu amiibo. Okay. In addition, right. Chris oh, offered a roast. So now that's twenty dollars. How much are amiibos? Are they ten or twelve? Let's say ten. That's twenty dollars because you've ruined the fucking tail from the other one. So what are you selling that for? Like fifty bucks? Version as well, which was also seemingly customized from a Sonic figurine. Within the first few hours of this announcement, Christie managed to sell off all ten available amiibos, for which cost forty-one dollars each. Okay, that's fair. I feel like that's a little low. He should have priced it a little higher. That's actually a reasonable price point. I would, I would not pay for that because that's fucking stupid. But if I was somebody who would have paid for that, I would go. Okay, fair enough. However, four members deduced that since she had to buy two amiibos to create a single Sonichu or Roastru one, in addition to further customization with Crayola model magic clay and acrylic paint, Chris made a profit of about $10 to $14 for each figurine sold, yeah. before additional eBay fees. Kiwi Forms moderator and former troll, Marvin, confirmed that Christine was aware of the low profits, and that she mostly made them for fun. Upon receiving the okay. figurines, some of the buyers reported problems, such as Sonic juice arriving broken in half, or ears or tails coming off before the package was opened. Incredible. Well, you know what? That's what you get. They paint. Wait, anyway, Chris Teen also painted the whole back too. That's a deal. But also, yeah, what the fuck is that? Wait, those things are supposed to be relatively sturdy. How does it fall apart? Oh my god. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Despite this, seemingly no one decided to file a complaint against Chris or leave a negative rating. Well, you know what you're getting there. You know, on April 7th, you know Christine there. made a Facebook post explaining why she chose to use Sonic's amiibo base that could transfer the Sonic the Hedgehog character to a game console rather than Pikachu's, and suggested that people vote for Sonichu to become a downloadable character for the Nintendo game Super Smash Bros., which featured a wide selection oh of playable God. characters from various video games. In addition, Could you fucking imagine, dude? Oh, a Sonic's true character in Super Smash? That would've been nuts. She offered a drawing depicting Sonichu himself, promoting his own amiibo figurine, and talking about having fun playing Super Smash Bros. Cool. This request resulted in trolls submitting parodic applications to Nintendo, giving their own reasons for why Sonichu should be included in the game. A week later, Chris addressed the recent Free the Nipple movement, which aimed to normalize women not wearing bras while out in public, and optionally, freely exposing their nipples. She approved of their stance, while also countering with her own Brazilians oh. for Males movement. She hoped that more women would feel Wait, how do you do- what? ...free to express themselves with their bodies, and conversely hoped that more men learned to be more modest and wear bras. Christine- Wait, how, you can't- you can't do that! That doesn't make any- the, the, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what my expectation is of Chris, uh, Christian Weston Chandler. But, like, you- the whole argument behind free the nipple is that women are held to a different standard than men, and they shouldn't be. That's it. So how are you going to be like, yeah, you know what? Sh women should show their tits, but also men shouldn't. That's, like, counterproductive. Not that I, I don't know why I'd expect any that that understanding from, from Chris, but okay. Also attached a photo of herself wearing a bra. Incredible. Her Facebook friend, Kenneth Engelhart, I thought you were a reply, girl. stating that female breasts were functional to $14 for each figurine sold. Ah, what I do? Herself wearing a bra. Her Facebook friend, okay. Kenneth Engelhart, left a reply, stating that female breasts were functional and needed protection, while the male variant had no such need or purpose. Chris felt that- Um, I mean, that argument is... I don't even know. It doesn't matter if it's true or not, because you would let women make their own decision. So your argument's like, boobs need to be protected. Make women wear bras. Why? Okay, balls need to be protected. Make men wear cups. No, I, got, I can make my own choice on what I want to want to and want to not to do. Distinction was irrelevant. Her other friend, William Waterman, felt her statement was sexist. Um, you can suggest a video by sending it into uh, my Instagram or something or Twitch. On that same day, Chris wrote a Facebook post concerning her reasons for why she thought that the free Wii U game, Disney Infinity, was mediocre. Fuck you, Chris! Fuck you! Fuck you! Sorry. I love Disney Infinity. It's a shame that they got rid of it. I'm just going to say it. Horrible. What a travesty. What a travesty. On April 16th. Christine posted a drawing with a proclamation from Rose Chu, saying that she picked the Metroid video game series character, Samus, while playing Super Smash Bros. Samus. Brothers. Chris added that if Sonichu is chosen to be a new character in the game, she would in return possibly make more Sonichu comics. In her next Facebook post, Chris elaborated on the differences between Rose Chu and the Sonic character, Amy Rose, by which Rose Chu was originally inspired. Okay. She clarified that Rose Chu possessed quills on her back, a different hairstyle, was more independent in her character, had a longer tail, and that her breasts were larger than Amy's. Later that day, Why? she made another post, commenting on the proposed public restroom act in Florida, which would prevent transgender people from using the public bathroom of their choice. 
Chris was against this motion, stating that transgender people should be allowed to use the restrooms of their opposite birth gender. She felt that some people might feel offended at trans women and trans men using the bathrooms, and that some perverted men might take advantage of the situation and disguise themselves as women in order to enter the women's restrooms, uh, but thought it was unlikely to happen. The next day, Chris yeah. encountered the claim okay. made by a survey published in the UK magazine Daily Mail that Charlottesville, Virginia, was found to be the happiest place in the United States. Wow. She listed off some notable individuals that she felt were amongst the many paranoid, amongst unfriendly, us. offensive, and rude people of the city, which included Michael Snyder, Mary Lee Walsh, every male police officer, and trolls and cyber bullies who continued to lurk in the area. Every male police officer. Incredible. On April 21st, Christine updated her Facebook profile to reflect her recent change in identity, officially changing her first name to Christine wow. and her gender to female. She reinstated Incredible. that she identified as a lesbian and shared a post from the human rights campaign supporting marriage equality. Okay. The following day, she shared a petition which aimed to free an autistic sixth grader who was charged with felony assault. So Interesting. I'm surprised that Christine isn't being as racist as normal because I would have expected them to skip this one. I'm just saying, um, just based on their history, but okay. And after, she shared an article from NBC News concerning two parents dealing with her daughter, believing she was meant to be a boy instead. Whoa. Christine left a lengthy comment supporting the child's choice as she understood the feeling he was going That's so boy cute. Instead. Christine left a lengthy comment. That's so cute. As a trans woman, I get what Jacob slash Mia went through at his early age. <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, and that I myself have subconsciously went through my life not fully understanding that I was not happy of being normal. male. I gotta be honest with you, nothing to me indicates any of this. I don't, I just, for Chris specifically, I think that Christian, specifically Christine, is if their trans identity doesn't come from anything that they felt was like incorrect at birth, but rather just some kind of incredibly insane manipulation from trolls to a point where they like are fucking like they identify as trans now like it's just i wouldn't say it, and trans kids all their conversation to have but i just don't think that crit i mean i don't know i'm not saying i mean i'm just saying i'm not i don't know if it's valid or not uh, just saying that this is fucking i don't think that christine's adventure or journey is typical for most trans people okay supporting the child's choice as she understood the feeling he was going through she recommended to the boy to hang on to his birth gender as it would aid in starting up a family later on in life and encouraged him to stay in school to learn a lot of details and facts. Well, it can be difficult to maintain that birth. Christine posted a drawing. You know, it can be difficult, you know, I don't know. I think fertility is very difficult to do if you don't go through your your body's natural um, puberty. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like that's one of the hard things about the conversation about trans kids. A black Sonichu, also known as Blake, talking about who he would choose to play as in the game Super Smash Brothers. He would choose either Ganondorf, a villain from the Legend of Zelda video game franchise, okay. or the Mario Brothers villain, Bowser. Four days later, she shared an article which revealed that the Sonic Boom video game was originally meant to be titled as Sonic Synergy, among other scrapped ideas. Chris felt that if the game was released as first intended, she would never have had to protest Sonic's blue arms and develop mixed feelings for the song Sonic Boom, featured in the 1993 game Sonic CD. On May 3rd, Christine announced on Facebook that she had 10 more Sonichu Amiibos ready-made for sale on wow. eBay. In a later comment... So that means that she went to the store and dropped two, 250 bucks to make these? <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. She updated her readers that she planned to get the drawings stating Wild and Bubbles' choices for Super Smash Bros. finished by the following day, since she was keeping herself busy cleaning out trash in the backyard. Later that day, Kiwi Farms user Lucrid wrote that they witnessed Chris at Charlottesville's Impulse Gay Social Club, enjoying wow. a show starring drag queens, and wrote an account of what they saw. Very cool! He was wearing a sleeveless blue dress with white flowers. It looked like something from Goodwill, over a dark navy blue t-shirt, sneakers, and normal glasses. Chris hardly talked to anyone, though he seemed to be really enjoying the show. He okay. tipped all of the performers. It is customary to tip the performers that you like, so it is not that unusual. Though Chris showed his appreciation- You know, it is interesting because like, at, when the whole, you know, drag or kid the pride situation uh, that went down, uh, I was like, oh, the tipping is sexual to me. And people were like, no, that's just normal at a drag show. I think my wife said that. And I was like, really? That's just a normal thing at a drag show? Is it sexual then? Or, I mean, if, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I still think it's weird, though. Right? Like, I still think it's so fucking bizarre. But, all right, I guess, you know? It's just fucking weird shit. ...for every single performer. 
I think there were at least 10 performances in total, with an intermission in the middle somewhere. He stayed for the whole show, which means that he didn't get back to Rutgersville until well after midnight. On the other end of the stool that Chris was sitting on, there were two biological girls. I have no idea if they are Christorians or just random girls, but I noticed Chris was trying to sit closer to them, and it looked like he was trying to listen in on their conversation without taking part in it. It was a little weird, but then I turned around later, and he was talking to them. When he left though, he wasn't with anyone else. After the drag show itself ended, people typically stick around and socialize. There was still music playing, and Chris kind of did a swing dance thing where he was standing, and his eyes were half shut. Oddly enough, the expression he made reminded me of how he looked in the For JR's Eyes Only video. The impulse had become one of Chris's most frequent spots, attending the venue almost every weekend. All right. On May 5th, Chris posted the Super Smash Bros. character choices for two of her Sonichu characters. Wild Sonichu would play as the eponymous Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong, while Bubbles Rose Chu would take the Mario character, Peach. Was Sonic on... Was Sonic in this one yet? Sonic's in Super Smash Bros. now, but was Sonic in Super Smash Bros. at the time of the filming? No, right? No, no, okay. Because I was like, wouldn't they just play themselves? But and that, with that understanding, yeah, I guess not. She then signed and shared a petition aiming to induct musician Melissa Etheridge into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. On May 7th, Christine attended her scheduled court hearing in Charlottesville. Kiwi Farms user Libertor left an account concerning her appearance, demeanor, and the general goings-on of the hearing. It was a Girl Scout, green slash teal color, and cut, worn over a white t-shirt. The cut was just above the knees. Christian wore dirty old sneakers with old gym socks with this. He also had a matching hat that How was- How the fuck did you notice socks? I don't understand. What the fuck with what? Same color as his dress. You could tell by his face that he thought he looked cute as shit while wearing that hat, but he looked like a fucking moron. Christian sat near the so front mean. with his back to the side wall so he Jesus could scope Christ. everyone in there out. Saw him lock eyes on some dude and pull his phone out and text someone. They're not allowed to have phones with cameras, so he had a flip phone with him. It took nice. fucking hours for them to finally get to his case. When they finally did, well, why are you there? nervous. Uh, yeah. They kept calling him by both male and female pronouns at different times. They called him Chris slash Christian slash Christine, and a couple of times Crystal. I know Crystal is his daughter, but apparently the judge accidentally called him that a few times, and I was in no position to correct the man. Christian didn't seem phased by any of this, and went with whatever name slash pronoun used at the time. They wow, talked forever, and it was mostly just establishing what happened and what the charge was. So it was hard to hear, so the next part is a bit speculative. It sounded like the reason for the continuance was because they wanted Christian to seek a shrink slash counselor slash whatever, so they could do a mental health plea. They wanted him to go like right after the court too. He seemed to agree to this at the time. On the way out, my field agent was confronted by some lady. She asked the field agent what they were doing there and what their name was. She said she was a reporter. My field agent was like, yeah, I'm not telling you that. She shifted tone and said she just wanted to buy my field agent a cup of coffee and hear his story. She wanted to know why a community of people on the internet literally document everything in his life. An interview was declined. Dude, could you fucking imagine the therapist that's like responsible for dealing with that? That's crazy. <laughs> Like, holy shit, imagine being a therapist sitting down and, like, not being a part of, like, online meme culture and shit. And you hear this. Some person that's like, yeah, I get relentlessly bullied on the internet for, ex for a comic that I have called Sonic Chew, which is a mixture between Pikachu and Sonic. How are some of the ways you get bullied? Well, some people steal my work. And they say that they make their own things like... Uh, uh, autism chew or asper chew well chris don't you think that maybe since you did that you're parodying sonic isn't it all free game no i, I imagine that's how the conversation goes the What's case going is given on, a continuance with the next hearing scheduled for june 11th on may 12th christine uploaded a few new photos of herself giving flirty poses for the mirror kim wilson left a comment flirty revealing poses. that chris had been taking hormones <laughs> to aid her transition the new photos and hormone revelation were discussed in a thread on QB Farms. Wait, Christine is ac was actually on hormones? Wow. Which Chris referenced in a Facebook comment, writing the Farms user, Cat Party, had correctly guessed her bra cup size as a D, and asked Cat Party to enjoy her cookies, giving him the pet name, Suga. Kenneth then Sugar. wrote a comment, warning her that taking female hormones can cause serious health complications. Another Facebook friend, um, Rowan maybe. Dunstan, asked her to talk to a medical professional concerning her use of hormones, to which Chris replied that she had already discussed the matter with a doctor who approved of her treatment. A day later, she posted a photo on her Braziers for Males Facebook page of herself shirtless, with her nipples covered up by heart-shaped pasties. In the accompanying text, she boasted that her breast size had increased from Betty B's to Daria D's. <laughs> on May 13th, Chris wrote a post targeting possible friends with benefits. 
Hey y'all, this post from my new women friends who I have had the pleasure meeting lately. My main focus has been on being friends, and I will continue to honor and respect y'all as such. But I am also looking for friends with benefits. I will not personally push it. It is your call. I will still be your- Why friends with benefits? Like, what happened? What? This is also like a different shift too. Chris used to want- Chris, whatever. It's not, uh, they used to want a relationship. So like, what changed? What what made her this way? What what's where where'd the change come from? It seemed like very sudden, you know. And I just don't really understand it. So now all of a sudden they just want some pussy. So it's bizarre to me, you know. It's bizarre. Friends, pussy regardless, to be direct, I'm open to all women, straight, bi, and lesbian. In fact. While I am fairly educated about tribidism and abreast with theories, I would appreciate some experience with a lesbian or two who knows what she likes to enlighten me better, including on sensual massage and all that. Ah. I understand how my born part, shall we say, would offend, and Charlottesville is a small city, which is why I am posting this note online. A friend can be referred to me as well. My DQ friends can help me there as well, please. On my giving you all each my contact card, y'all know how to contact me directly. Facebook messages, texting, and emails are highly recommended. You may telephone me as well, but please leave your name and phone number in the voicemail, and I will call you back. Thank you all, and have a great and safe day. Dude. Two days later. I, I, I remember, this is like weird for me, I'm, I'm older, but I remember like setting up the answering machine and stuff, and you'd hear like the person's voice on their end. I think you could do that on your cell phone now, but I don't even bother. Just whatever automated thing comes up. We've become very robotic as a society, huh? It's crazy. Chris wrote an additional extended version of her previous post, adding more specific details concerning her want of true platonic friends and friends with benefits alike. Soon after, she posted another advertisement for ladies, hoping that one would befriend her and then try her sexually. She highlighted that she would provide traditional intercourse for the straight women, oh clit rubbing and pussy eating for the lesbians, Incredible. and anything else for bisexual women. Additionally, Chris could offer massages, kissing, eye contact, and lots of attention. On that same day, Christine posted the next installment in her series of Sonichu characters talking about what characters they would play as in Super Smash Bros. In this okay. case, Angelica Rosechu proclaimed that she would choose the character Pit from the Kid Icarus video game franchise. On May 18th, Chris posted on Facebook that she did not know and understand everything, nor was she perfect, clarifying that in fact, nobody was. However, she extensively read about the history of lesbians in America and learned of the hardships they had suffered. She wrote that friendship with women was her top priority, and told all haters who had nothing positive to contribute to go to the left and far behind her in the distant past with their cruel ways. She soon after liked an article. That sounds like a be Ugh, gross. That sounds like a Beyonce song. I also thought this was Chris, which is why I said gro Christine, Christine, her. Okay, anyway. From the magazine Elephant Journal concerning how to master talking dirty in a sexual scenario. <laughs> soon after again. Ah. Uh, uh. You know, I, I the trolling stuff is so fucked up, but I almost wish that we got to see Chris try to talk dirty, you know? Chris liked an article from Playboy magazine on Facebook, which wrote of the medical benefits of masturbation. Yep. At around this time, can it's we- good for your prostate, fellas. And anyone else who has a prostate. I'm just saying. You know, it's so interesting that we have this conversation about periods. We have this conversation about periods all the time, right? Where it's like, oh, not all women- oh, not all- more- oh. Women aren't the only ones who get periods, you know, that stuff. And it's like, okay, I get it. Trans men, trans, trans men exist. But how come nobody's like, oh, men aren't, men aren't the only ones who get prostate cancer? You know what I mean? Nobody's, when it comes to prostate cancer, nobody's like, oh, my God. What about trans women? You know what I mean? Nobody really uh, gives a shit about that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, dude. It's something to think about. Farms user, Pickle Inspector, sent Christine a private message <laughs> on Pickle Facebook inspector. asking if she was no longer interested in having intercourse with heterosexual women. Chris denied this, writing that she was interested in women of all orientations. Pickle Inspector then asked if she was willing to have sex with male-to-female transsexuals, to which she replied with a fervent no, since Whoa. they were born with a dick. Well, on the 21st, Christine That's fair. You know, to, uh, Christian, Christ, Christine has a pussy preference, okay? an update telling her wait so what about like uh somebody with like bottom surgery i wonder first that her counterpart that lived in quickville was also a lesbian trans woman and had transformed herself into an updated version of chris chan sonichu it's more in her time. new form her right. shoes were different she had a rounded feminine tail and her breasts were larger in addition she noticed that not only did she have a penis but a vagina as well wow. she asked magic chan to mentally link with her and examine her insides he told her that she had a fully developed uterus ovaries and even some ovium she had an idea, which concerned her changing back into her human form to extract some of her essence, and then changing back into Christian Sonichu to insert her essence into herself. 
After a brief battle with Count Graduan, she was examined in a hospital to discover that she had impregnated herself. Two weeks later, she laid a single egg, after which... This is a wild story. <laughs> I was gonna ask, like, is it possible? So, are there people that are actually born with, like, those with both? Like, fully functioning? Is that... Is that... Is that exist? I feel like most people... There's, like... So, they're referencing somebody that's intersex. So, most people... Intersex is like a spectrum. There's like pseudo male and pseudo female intersex, you know. So I don't think anybody's like the perfect mixture of both. Um, there's just like mixtures between the two. Each time she transformed back into the human form of Christine. Wow. After another three weeks, Powerful the story. egg hatched, containing twins, Asani and a Rosie. <laughs> she named them Russell and Cynthia, and they both grew up healthy without any birth defects, not oh. even autism. The post right. came attached with a new drawing depicting the previous version of Christian Sonichu. Wait, transitioning how did? Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm confused. Let me get this right. They fucked themselves and had a baby. Is that character, the original character, have autism? Because wouldn't it just be like basically like a fucking clone of yourself? Like, I'm, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess not. I guess not. All right. I mean, it makes sense, I guess, if they had the baby early enough, because I think they're one of the reasons that Christine might have autism it has to do with how late their parents had a baby because like honestly the later the longer you wait to have a baby the higher chance of like a defect there is into her current form and a few photos of a new amiibo fashioned to look like christian sonichu chris plans to include the story into the wider canon of her sonichu storyline rowan left a comment asking if her sonichu form should instead be a Roshu, since she had transitioned into a woman ah. christine replied that she chose to maintain the name christian sonichu though she later considered changing it to chrissy chan Roshu. on may 23rd Christine posted answers to some questions, which were asked in a video from the BBC Free Speech Facebook page regarding transgender people. Big, big she said that she cock. always had a feminine soul within her. She uses the public restrooms of the gender of her choosing, implying Bro, that she I, I just don't know. I just, like, okay, listen, in this specific situation, I just don't know how much I believe that there's always... Like, this revelation that, that Christine is trans doesn't seem like something that's been building for a long time. It came off as incredibly abrupt. So I just feel like this, I don't, I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like this whole, like it's, I've been like this my whole life. It does. I, I don't know if I believe that. Aided urinals due to splashback and lack of privacy. She clarified splashback. that she felt comfortable in herself as a lesbian transgender and that she set herself apart from the gay transvestites with male mindsets. Yeah, Chris. Chris no, Chris is not a virgin it. anymore. No, they're not. Chris has lost their virginity to a, to a prostitute. At ease and making friends with drag queens as long as they mutually respected each other's wishes. She expressed that she would never go back to being a male, and if anyone were interested in seeing how she looked as a man, they could look up her name on Google and find many photos on the internet. That's true, yeah. On May 24th, she posted an image of a background My Little Pony character named by fans as Vinyl Scratch, and accompanied the picture with a written post describing her sensations at the Impulse Gay Social Club. Chris wrote that the music was so loud that it reverberated within her breasts, and the vibrations made her feel aroused. She asked her readers if anyone else had a similar experience. Wait, what? Here is a most audio sonic feeling while at the club last night. The music was so loud, uh, maybe reverberating or echoing. The music and beats literally shook me up my rack. I actually felt the music playing and reverberating within my breasts, almost like my breasts had become a pair of speakers. It felt amazing and arousing. What the fuck? Chris, what the fuck? Is that, do, is that how women operate? Is that why girls go to the club? Because your tits feel like speakers? Like, is it? Is this something I don't know? Is this like one of those things, like like women poop that we just don't know about? It's like, oh, women poop. Oh my god, are you serious? Women's tits absorb the music. Is this a typical woman experience of of feeling the music in your tits? I don't know. I don't know if I believe you. I think that I don't know. I think that might be that that that's why women like this. Interesting. Wow. Experience and whether science could explain the phenomenon. The next day, Kiwi Farms user Hey. <laughs> science explain the phenomenon. I don't think science could explain your existence, Chris. Ah, uh, Christine. Jackie Pie wrote an eyewitness account of Chris's activities at the club. Chris wore a pink shirt, which appeared to be the same one in his Facebook post. He was seated with two young women and a man, who were later revealed to be in college. He initially seemed to be part of their group, but this later seemed not to be true. It wasn't clear what he was saying, but at parts, he was very loud. He didn't seem to be socially aware of how loud he is or how bad his voice sounds. And uh -huh. his mood? He was immensely happy and having a very good time. That's I cannot good. overstate this. This very well seemed to be the greatest night of his life. 
He approached That's multiple cute. groups of girls around the bar area and talked to them for about five minutes each. The girls didn't seem put off or creeped out and were equally invested in the conversation. He talked to about four or five groups of girls before NMC announced the show would soon begin. I wonder why they didn't feel uncomfortable. I guess because like I wonder if they I don't know. I guess that's good. That's good. Maybe that's maybe that's what it's all about. And that's a place for Chris to Chris, Christine to feel like themselves. Very beautiful. It was like he owned the room or was one of the regulars that everyone knew and loved. Wow. The MC was getting everyone excited for the show and making several sexual jokes about hooking up, 69, cock, etc. Everyone seemed cock, to be enjoying it. Et the MC then talked to a few people asking names and where they were from and welcoming them. The group Chris was initially with had a newcomer, and when the MC walked over, Chris stood up and yelled, They're in college! Again, I cannot understate how loud this was, because his voice is naturally high-pitched. It was very piercing when he yelled. The MC even then said, We hope to see you on stage soon, Christine. It wasn't clear how he reacted, but yeah, it was actually suggested Chris do drag. The wow. dancer would dance to the song on stage and slowly guests would reach out with a dollar bill, extended to tip. The dancers would walk out into the seating area, singing and collecting dollar bills and dancing their way through the crowds. Chris tipped every dancer. At the intermission, Chris made his rounds on more groups of women before resuming his seat. He was constantly scouting the area for women to talk to. Besides the college guy in his initial group, he never talked to a single guy. After a minute or so, he then stood up and began to skip and prance his way towards the bathroom at the front of the stage, but only to put something, possibly a piece of paper or napkin, in the trash. Why would you, why would you put the bathroom in the front of the stage? That just seems like bad planning, personally. He then skipped back again. He was beaming with happiness and glee. A few minutes later, he walked to the bathroom at the front of the stage. While he was in there, a woman started dancing by herself in the dance area, as women typically do in clubs. She seemed okay. to be with a group of people her age, about 40, and just wanting to have fun and dance. When Chris exited the bathroom, he beelined right to her and started to dance with her. He appeared to say, I'm Christine, when he leaned in to talk to her, and she appeared to respond, Oh, hi. Chris was very engaged in conversation with the woman, more so than any other encounter he had that night. This didn't seem necessarily unusual because he was simply trying to see if she had any feelings for her and was just aggressively leaning in. She was being very friendly in response too. It was only unusual in the sense that this woman was clearly straight, clearly with a group of people, clearly out of his league. She just seemed to play along with it for a bit. As I said earlier, Chris was immensely happy and it was very clear he was enjoying himself, but this seemed to be more than just a great night out. It seemed as if this club means much more to him than just a fun place. It's a place where he is welcome, where he can talk to women and try to make friends. Well, that's a nice place where though, he can no. even dance with women, and a place where, maybe, he can meet a sexual partner. In many ways, I think True. it will become like a Manchester high to him. His happiness was very evident in the way he skipped to the trash can. It looked foolish and silly, and something a little schoolgirl or child would do. Also noteworthy, there were numerous sexual jokes and references of the X-rated variety, which I think he thoroughly enjoys, because he thinks if so many people there are having sex, so too will he. In many True. ways, his overly sexualized Facebook posts are not surprising given his history. We know Chris has always been interested in sex, but he probably thinks it's normal to post these updates because this language is so persistent at the club. It's I, mean, also who, I mean, who doesn't like sex? I don't really get that. Clearly Chris's autism and or a variety of other factors that he can't tell the difference between when this language is socially acceptable, hosting a drag show, and when it isn't. Facebook. Also, many people seem to think Chris's presence must have been a horrifying experience for everyone else. Why? It wasn't. While no one seemed to be interested oh. in him beyond polite and playful conversation and dancing, no one seemed repulsed by him. Chris seemed to come off as a silly but fun-loving girly girl who was just so happy to be having such a great time. So while he might have looked foolish or silly, he was just so happy that people either feel a bit sorry for him or just seemed to be happy he's so happy. Hey Daki Pie then shared three videos they filmed at the club of Christine offering tips to drag queens. Look at those big boobies! Oh my goodness, those must be natural. Those have to be natural boobas, you know what I'm saying? And then enjoying wow. a dance with a woman. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. On May 25th, in honor of Memorial Day, Christine wrote that she was watching a program on the TV channel PBS with her mother, and that she had also watched the film American Sniper. She reflected on oh, war, and that yeah. even though countries strive to protect their communities and homes, hey, months. thanks for the reset, brother. I gotta mute that. Sorry, brother. Homes, people got hurt deep, emotionally and mentally, and so wished that a more peaceful resolution could have replaced acts of war. She then commented on her father, Robert Chandler, missing him every day. She highlighted that he served in the Signal Corp in Seoul, Korea, and made Korean friends there. 
Chris later protested on Facebook against the proposed name change of the minor My Little Pony character, who was called either Derpy, Ditsy Doo, or Bubbly Mare. She thought that changing the character's name to Muffins, after the food she liked, would cause riots and catastrophes in a similar vein as when Sonic's arm color was changed to blue. Wait, hold on. Don't call a pony a name based on what she might like to eat, especially when on more than three occasions before she had already been named Ugg. I predict riots and catastrophes as, catastrophes as horrific as Sonic's arm color change if we hear at any point in the TV show any pony re repeatedly called Ditsy Doo Derpy or Bubble Mare Muffin. Bro, what? The only catastrophe or riot riot was from you. What are you talking about? That's insane. I wonder if they're trying to get rid of the name Ditsy because it seems like oh, ableist or something. I don't really know. But this I, I predict riots because I got upset once they changed Sonic's arm color. Oh, well, that's a really good basis for your logic there, Chris, uh, Christine. On the 26th, Chris completed an online quiz to discover what kind of lady she was. She found that she was the mysterious lady, a revelation she greeted with elation. Yeah, on June 3rd, right. Christine Very shared mysterious. Punchy Sonichu's choice for Super Smash Bros. Little Mac from the Punch-Out! series of games due to their common interest in boxing. Soon after, she posted that she had made 10 more customized amiibo characters and listed them up for sale on eBay. God. The next day, she made another bulletin announcement for her amiibos. On June 5th, Chris revealed that Wash was making the latest batch of figurines. She had accidentally cut her finger with a pocket knife and had to go to the hospital to get it stitched. Okay. In addition to dealing with that discomfort, she felt further crestfall because no one had yet to show any interest in purchasing one of the new Sonichu amiibos. In response to this post, three figurines were quickly bought by unknown buyers. Wow, they so they bought ten, they made ten. They spent like two hundred fifty dollars to make ten of them, and nobody bought them. Terrible. Two days later, Christine posted one of her previous pictures of herself with an overlay, fashioned to look like wow. the front cover of the magazine Vanity Fair. I thought it was real. I thought that they had Christine on there. I didn't, but you wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be surprised because Chris. Oh God, it's so fucking weird saying this. Chris Dean kept winning contests as a young as a youngin, so I wouldn't. I really wouldn't doubt it if. Uh, Thing like that actually happened. I really just wouldn't. Following a popular trend at the time in response to Caitlyn Jenner, a transgender woman formerly known as Olympic athlete Bruce Jenner being featured on the cover. Okay. In the accompanying text, she expressed her pride in being transgender. The next day, Christine was selected to be the pristine Tootsie of the Week by blog critical of some aspects of the transgender community, transphobic. On June 9th, she listed to- Oh, so they used, they used, uh, I'm assuming they used Christine as a, an example of what not to be. Is that what the argument there is? Two new items for sale on eBay, a 1990 silver dollar coin, and a commemorative coin made to celebrate the release of the game Mario Galaxy. On that same day, she wrote of her shock upon learning that there were confirmed plans to make a new Sonic Boom game for the Nintendo 3DS. She pleaded for retailers not to stock the game, and said that she could not personally go out to the stores to protest the game like before. Why? She then commented on the retailer Best Buy's official Facebook page, telling them to tell Sega of America and Japan to not send copies of their Sonic Boom game to their stores until Sonic's arm color was changed back to tan, and that failure to the comply with her demands dude. would result in attacks from countless trolls, hackers, and cyber bullies because the of her obsession. standing as an influential what the individual. Fuck is happening here? Later again, she wrote a Facebook post in response to an interview with Omar Woodley, producer for the upcoming game Sonic Boom Fire and Ice. Okay. Bring to me, in person, the one called Olmar Woodley, so I can tell to his face of my plights and troubles I went and had to jai through because of the sensory overloading, horrific arm color change that should never have happened! And then, let me kick and beat him up upon further refusal to change the arm color back to tan in everything Sonic Boom! Damn and f*** Olmar Woodley! She later edited the post to include fellow producer Stephen Frost in her demands. Due to the news regarding the new Sonic Boom game, Chris proclaimed that Sega have ruined a peaceful, pleasant life for her, and in revenge, she took off the arms of a Sonic plush doll. Comment <laughs> oh my god, the fucking molding is crazy. Uh, has anyone told me I'm bald? No, nobody actually. I was I didn't even know I was bald until you said that. It's crazy. Just commented that if she had purchased the doll herself, then she was supporting the franchise she was protesting against. Later that day, in response to a comment regarding the possibility of playing as Sonic Chu in the new Sonic Boom game, the official Twitter account for Sonic the Hedgehog acknowledged it, and said that it may be possible only if Sonic Chu were to go through a drastic redesign, which would include giving him blue arms. Oh a member of the Kiwi God. Farms privately sent Chris a message <laughs> detailing the Twitter exchange, but she refused to believe its veracity. On June 10th... Wait, was it real? Wait. Twitter account for Sonic the Hedgehog... Sonic the Hedgehog... That's Sonic... Wait a minute. In addition to further customization is this real? with Crayola Model Magic Clay and acrylic Hold paint, on. Chris made a profit of about 10 to 14. What, what the fuck did I cl like click to put that so early in the thing? Oh my god, it's so annoying sometimes, dude. Without any birth defects. Not Holy shit.
Let's go. Okay, we're back. 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 All right. All right. So here's what they say. At Sonic the Hedgehog, will I be able to play a Sonic Tune, Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice? Sonic Boom Game, the official Twitter account for Sonic the Hedgehog, acknowledged it and said that it may be possible only if Sonic Tune were to go through a drastic redesign, which would include giving him blue arms. Maybe if we give Sonic Tune blue arms, three scars, and ultimately just redesign him as Big the Cat. I don't know what the fuck Big the Cat is. That a character from Among Us? Big the Cat. Okay. Oh, it's this. So this is uh, is this Sonic Chew? Oh my God, is this the inspiration for Sonic Chew? Big the Cat? Wait a minute, when was Big the Cat created? We got to do our fucking. We got to do it. Uh, bing, 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 bing. When was Big the Cat created? We have to see. Nineteen ninety eight. Wait a minute. When was Sonic? Two thousands. Wait a minute. When was the first issue of Sonic Chew? What what year was it? Does anybody know? What's the timeline? Wait a minute. March nineteen eighty eight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Holy, wait a minute. Wait, did is Sonic Chew the inspiration for Big the Cat? Probably not. But you never know. That's actually very funny. Dude, this is the second time that Sonic, they, they've called out to Chris. That they've been like, ah, oh, we know who you are, you fucking asshole. This is very, this is like worlds colliding, dude. What a fucking, what an adventure. Arms. A member of the Kiwi Farms privately sent Chris a message detailing the Twitter exchange, but she refused to believe its veracity. Oh. All you literally had to do? Chris posted a photo. All you literally had to do is go and, and, and verify the claims, Chris. That's it. It really wouldn't have been that difficult. So, of her full collection of custom Sonic Chew characters, and wrote that she was hesitant about putting up the other amiibos for sale due to the added difficulty in expenses and acquisition of the necessary parts and character chips. That evening, she attended an LGBTQ youth and family bowling event with other members of the community. Bullying or bowling? I was going to say, there's a bullying event? Where can I go? I want to bully some LGBTQ kids, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't bully the kids, just the adults. On June 11th, Christine went to her next scheduled appearance in court. Kiwi Farms user, Asper Hess, was at the courthouse and wrote an account of what they saw. He was wearing an aqua blue outfit with matching eyeshadow, blue sweater, blue colored blouse with vertical stripes, blue skirt with vertical stripes, dark stockings. Everything matched well except for his grotty sneakers, which are blue but the wrong shade. He had a headband Struggle and his hair looked the way it has in all his recent photos. He wore his glasses. He had his black purse with all the jangly shit hanging off it. He was reading something. I couldn't tell what it was at first, but when he stood up, it turned out to be the issue of Vanity Fair with Miss Caitlyn Jenner on the cover. He uses his index finger to help him read. When I first arrived, there was a middle-aged woman sitting next to him. I assumed she was his public defender, but as soon as the judge arrived, she went up to speak with the judge and left the room. What? Before she left, Chris said to her, I'm Christine, by the way. The woman introduced herself to Chris and said goodbye, so Chris had apparently initiated small talk. A few minutes later, Chris did a little hand wave okay. to a female lawyer who walked in, who returned the wave. He seems to be checking out every woman who entered the courtroom. Hey, listen, you gotta you gotta know your surroundings, okay? I don't blame him for that. You gotta shoot your shot all the time. The main reason why I made this last minute decision to attend was that he's been enraged about the new Blarms game, and I was hoping he'd show up with a sign demanding justice for transsexuals or something equally dramatic. Chris's mood was entirely the opposite. He was self-contained, calm, and collected. Wow. He was not angry, stressed, or nervous. He was not fidgety. Them. It was very hard to believe that this was the person who just the day before had expressed a public wish to beat up Sega executives. He sat and read his magazine. At one point, something he was reading caught his interest and he said, hmm, suddenly, causing the woman sitting next to him to turn her head to look at him. He seemed somewhat bored. He yawned twice, loudly, putting his hand over his mouth, which struck me as rather self-indulgent and overly dramatic. Okay. Around 9.40, after a couple quiet cases, they called Christian Chandler. At this point, the lawyer who had defended the probation violator walked over to Chris and escorted him to the front, revealing himself as the public defender. He is young, skinny, bearded, wore tweed. He seemed like a good guy, pretty relaxed. It was apparent that the first words out of the judge's mouth was that there was a continuance. Chris asked a question. The judge said it would be dealt with at the next hearing and that he should stay in Why touch. Why are there so many fucking continuances? Continue I. How do you say that? Why? How do you say that? I don't know. But you get what I'm asking you. With his lawyer. She and the lawyer wore big patronizing smiles. They treated him like a sensitive child. Their attitude was, everyone is your friend. No one wants to attack you. 
In the previous probation case, the judge was serious and all business because she was speaking with an adult. Here, even though macing someone is also pretty serious business, she knew she was dealing with a special individual and it was pointless to deal with him normally. So Chris has basically already won over the judge. Chris's attorney walked him out of the courtroom and I followed them out. They hung out on the front porch for about a minute to cover some issues. Damn, damn he told liberals, Chris that for yeah. the next hearing, be a little early like you were today. Another lawyer, a pretty young woman joined them and she was also all smiles. Chris complimented her clothing and she replied, I like her color too. For me, the most remarkable thing was how much progress Chris had made in getting over his social anxiety. He was very eager to initiate contact with any pretty woman he saw. Wow. You know, it's so interesting because I didn't really put two and two together until just now. But like, yeah, probably because of all the drag shows Chris has been going through is really helping them, Christine, really helping them like open up bud, like a budding flower, like a butt flower, you know? I think it's something he should be proud of. He's not the same guy who had to post a sign on the wall because of his noviophobia. This is actually a proven method for overcoming social anxiety. The more experience you have in talking to strangers, the easier it becomes. Of course, none of this will help him find a sweetheart, because while Chris is friendly, he's also immediately off-putting. He's instantly recognizable Dude, as a weirdo. I need to get off -putting. After Dude. she got back home, Chris wrote a lengthy post on Facebook that was largely the same as the one she had originally made after she was released from jail in December 2014. Afterwards, she posted another message regarding Sonic Boom on her Thick Sonic's Arms Immediately Sega Facebook page, which was also copied <laughs> from a previous message, telling her followers to order Sega to recall the games, take the TV show off the air, and change Sonic's arm color. In a shorter post, she clarified that as opposed to Sonic, her alter, Christian Sonichu form, underwent a transformation to match her female identity. She claimed that Sonic had no reason to get a design change. She later posted a drawing of Magi-chan, who wrote that he would choose to play as the Pokemon Mewtwo in Super Smash Bros. However, due to the scarcity of the Mewtwo amiibo, Christine had resorted to using the character chip and base of the Earthbound character Ness due to his psychic powers for the customized Magi-chan amiibo figurine. On June 12th, Chris attended a burlesque show in Charlottesville, in which she possibly performed as well as part of an audience participation segment. She wrote an account of that night the following day. Do you know who likes me? These women like me. I was at the Boom Boom Burlesque Show Friday night, and Zora Nova was quite taken with my audience support and participation. On stage, I acted a drown quite well. I applied Naraja lip balm with vaginal outlines, and I flexed muscles Fantastic. and booty. Not only was I awarded a couple of blow pops, but I also won the raffle, complete with a trophy and a tiara, among other most valuable prizes. And kisses and hugs were shared with great delight. And I also made more women friends, as well as met with a couple of other recent women friends once again as well. Thank you all, ladies, for a most fabulous and fun night, and for becoming my new friends too. She further added a post that praised the performers, describing their striptease movements as smooth and fluid, and was wholly satisfied with her first burlesque show. Also on June 13th, Christine expressed light disappointment after seeing that in the latest episode of My Little Pony, the character Ditsy Do was officially renamed to Muffins. Damn. The next day, she commented on the meaning of the word pristine, which reminds me of the whole Lizzo thing. What was it? What, what did they say? Spaz? Apparently spaz is a curse word or something in uh, Mexico? No, that's not it. What am I thinking of? Oh, Australia. So uh, Lizzo changed, uh, took the word spaz out of their thing. It's very woke. I mean, whatever. But it's ableist and what isn't anymore, you know what I mean? What isn't anymore, dude? You know what I'm saying, bro? She had used previously in the small print of her mock Vanity Fair cover image. She wrote that like the definition. Yeah, this she is liked. actually a good part of the Chris the timeline. I mean, Christian timeline. I mean, they they did um, pepper spray somebody. But now they're getting more social interactions and becoming a person. So... You know, going to drag shows, they seem to feel comfortable as a, uh, you know, in their own skin. I mean, like, I guess you can't really criticize this point in the timeline too much. It's fair. It makes sense. Uh, so that's good. Liked to be clean after a daily shower. But aside from that, she was pristinely not perfect. The next day, Christine shared an article from OMGFacts.com about a species of female-only lizards nicknamed lesbian lizards. Wow. Chris considered them same. more wild than the lesbian bonobos monkeys. On June 16th, she pondered that since she still felt attraction for women, she considered herself a lesbian in the aftermath of her transition. Okay. Likewise, if a female-to-male transgender person were to be attracted to males, they would be considered gay. On June 20th... Sorry. Okay, hold on. ...attraction for women, she considered herself a lesbian in the okay. aftermath of her transition. Likewise, if a female-to-male transgender person were to be attracted to males, they would be considered gay. Okay, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. I guess. June me, me personally, dude. Listen. Listen. I would fuck a trans woman, but if they had a penis, it would be a little gay. Okay. That's not. I. I'm just saying. You know, it would be less gay than sucking a strap on that a girl was wearing. 
because like that's extra gay. The gayest thing you could do is is, uh, is suck on a strap on because nobody gets pleasure out of it except for you. You know what I mean? Like if you're sucking a girl's dick, you know it's a little gay that you're sucking a dick, but at least it's a girl's dick, you know. But if you're sucking a, a, a lesbian, like or or, or, or a, I guess a uh, a woman's strap on, why? Like she doesn't feel anything. At least you're pleasuring a woman when you're sucking on a, girl, a lady dick. But you're just fucking you're sucking on it for yourself. That's gay. You know what I'm saying, dude? Yeah, I'm not super straight. <laughs> I forgot about the super straight movement. Holy fuck. <laughs> 20 seconds. Christine announced on Facebook that she created a new eBay account. Christine what? Christine 1982. To start nice. fresh with no negative ratings or selling restrictions. Though at okay. the beginning, she was limited to posting a maximum of 10 items. She first listed okay. autographed photos of herself, the descriptions of the listings for which were largely copied from her old Jesus Guides Me Too account without any alterations, including the archaic reference to herself as Christian. She later edited the post to state that next month she will list Sonic Medallions for sale as well. On the 24th, she shared a YouTube video called Geraldine concerning a man's overnight transformation into a woman, and wrote about a story in which a couple moved into a house that was in a bad state. And the female party decided to be grateful for the things she hated, which made her like in a bad like you know like a like a U.S. state like Louisiana or like in a bad uh, like a state of disrepair. I'm just wondering, just wondering. Feel that she deserved better, so they gradually began improving their house and turning it into their dream home. Chris commented that if it were that easy, she would say that she was grateful for her penis, but wished she would have a full functioning vagina and would turn into a woman like the person in vagina. the video. Vagina. On June 26th, she celebrated the Supreme Court's decision to legalize same-sex marriage across the country and wished for the date to be remembered as Pride Dependence Day. Chris reflected that she felt compatible with any woman and that she always felt like a woman, pointing out that she could never... Any, I mean, it's weird because any woman except for like a fat woman. I mean, like, let's be honest. That's what, that's Chris's perspective. That's not my perspective. I like big women, but that's, that's Christine's perspective, you know? Get into male interests. You're from Louisiana. You're offended. Well, you know, your state is fucking garbage i'm just telling you so i'm sorry for i mean i guess you just didn't know that somehow well, that, my bad i don't know feeling more appreciative of fashions makeup shopping empathy identifying feelings and looking to resolve problems reasonably <laughs> kim wilson interjected in the comments writing that christine was not compatible with straight women since she was a lesbian <laughs> i love the response someone like i said that like chris uh, christine isn't attracted to fat women and then someone goes yeah and he is a fat woman <laughs> Like you're, you're like halfway there, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. Oh, Jesus. While William Waterman questioned the meaning of the word, Brad Dependence. On July 2nd, Christine entered a competition called Summer at GameStop, which called on gamers to share their stories of building personal relationships through playing video games. She elaborated on her intentions in a Facebook post. Hey, I just entered this thing as an ironic joke. Dig it. Happened to me more than once. Oh, brother. Tch, yeah. Good luck finding anyone who has found actual and true love with anyone they met online before face to face. Too many damn fucked up fakes tugging at your oh, heartstrings. I, I went my wife on uh, OK, no, Tinder. I met her on Tinder. That's OK, Cupid. What the fuck? I met her on Tinder. I'm in love with her, Chris. I'll fucking I'll fuck you up, bro. Sis, sorry. Thanks for video fails from you and access to your Xbox or PSN account for Disgaea 3 DLC and Xbox. a full game download of Burnout Paradise. They fail you for their lulls. Not to be a hater or anything bad like that, but you should verify any and all entrants, the actual identities of both people and their meeting and background stories to the fullest of background checks. Guess what? Everyone will lie their burning pants off and your prize will be left unclaimed forever. I am serious and that is exactly what I told them, straight up. Also on that day, she posted an image macro which wrote of a heart being so resilient that it still works after being played, stabbed, cheated, burned, wow. and broken. Chris added so that sad. hers had also been soul shattered. Well, I mean, this is basically proof that Christian is a woman because that's women post this dumb shit all the fucking time. Oh my god, I'm still alive even though I've been manipulated. It's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, goddamn. Jesus Christ. Get a job, am I right? Scarred, blackmailed, duped, deceived, and more by fake ex girlfriends and trolls and cyber bullies. True. She later wrote a brief post revealing that she felt good because she looked down and found that her freshly grown breasts fit snugly into her D-cup brassiere. Very nice. Later again, Chris posted a drawing of pink lemonade in a glass jug being poured through a giant vagina and Why? onto a depiction of Christine herself, wearing what? only panties and cupping her breasts in her hands, with her turquoise bra thrown off to the side. Wow, the text well, on the, the drawing read, Pink fresh lemonade, so good to the last drop from the glass with class. In the text in the Facebook post. Well, the drawings are getting slightly better, I guess. So that's uh, that's something, you know. Uh, okay. Dared people to report it. 
In the comment section, Kim Wilson asked her if it were menstrual blood being depicted, with Chris answering in a vehement no, clarifying that it was simply pink lemonade, or alternatively, urine. Other com- It's pink lemonade, okay. Or urine. Why? Why? Why would it need? Why? Why? Why not just pink lemonade? Why does it? Why does there have to be an option for it to be urine? It's the way it is. I, I don't know. Pink piss? Like what the fuck's wrong with you? Did you stab your pee pee? Dude, I saw. You know what? One time I saw a video of this guy who got some a girl step like there was a sexual thing that she ste she stepped on his balls with stilettos and it fucking it wasn't pretty, man. They've come to blood. It's horrible. It's terrible. Commenters generally left positive reviews, including one Jessica Quinn, who asked for an explanation about what was happening in the picture. Chris told her that she was being showered with pink or strawberry lemonade through a vagina. Kenneth Engelhart asked why it was being poured through a vagina, with Chris stating that it was because she was most attracted to women. The following day, her Facebook page disappeared <gasps> due to unknown reasons. What the fuck? As she continued to embrace her new identity, Christine felt more at ease at mingling with seemingly like-minded people, a feeling of belonging she had not felt in a very long time. I just, I just hope that Christine started showering, okay? Because I knew that was a big point of contention for a while. A club was a sanctuary, a relief from both trollsome and legal troubles still prevalent in her life. However, a change in identity did not largely change her personality, and she would continue to engage with life with a predictable attitude, for she still was the same person behind a different name. Whoa, deep shit. Gino? Wow, incredible! That was part motherfucking 44. Wow. Never a disappointment. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.